This is part one of general rules and principles for Kempo 101. I've got Brad Congress here to help me out with this today. And one of the first rules we've got, in fact, we call it rule number one, is establish your base. That's uh, basically you set yourself in a stance. So if Brad is set up in a left neutral bow to me, for example, he's stabilized himself in height, width, and depth so that there's, if there's pressure, and what I mean by pressure is if it's weight or if it's an incoming attack, he is braced and stabilized. He's established his base. There's a lot of different ways to do it. That's why you've got different stances and positions. Now, this is really important when you do the self-defense techniques, of course, and I'd like to give you a simple illustration of the importance of establishing your base in an application. We've got a technique in the beginner level that's called circling wing, and it's a defense against a two-handed close choke from the rear. There's a very common mistake that's done in this technique, and it is not establishing the base uh, when they step off to get the opponent off balance and to start to get ready to, to fire your counterattack. The proper way is Brad would step across toward 130 with his left foot and he's got his base established and then he has some authority in his movement to come around and counterattack. Very commonly, the student will step forward with that foot and not have that base set. So in the meantime, when the opponent feels you start to move, any little pressure will keep you off balance. We'll take a look at this from the side so you get the profile view. Now the proper way would be to step over, set your base. So if I'm exerting some force, he's got some authority behind his move. If he steps over or attempts to step over by lifting his foot, any little pressure will prevent him from doing that. So establishing your base is critical. That's why it's rule number one. Now, a secondary uh, rule here is if Brad takes a left neutral bow, and this is a question that students often ask when they're brand new, is like, how do I know what stance I should be in when I'm applying a certain movement? The general rule here is front hand neutral, rear hand forward. Now, what that means is if Brad is going to hit with his front hand, and for this example, maybe he throws a jab or a back knuckle or something, so we've got a target here, and he shoots that front hand, and it's easy for him to do, so his shoulders are lined up to do this. If I get him screwed up and turn him into a forward bow stance, and he wants to shoot that front hand to that same target, he can't reach. He has to rotate back to the neutral in order to get the reach with that front hand. So when you find yourself in a situation where you might feel a little bound up with your movement, check to see if you're using the front hand with a neutral. Now, the second half to that is to use a forward bow with your rear hand. So we're going to rotate and hit with that rear hand. He's got to turn that back foot. He's got to lean into the front leg. Hips and shoulders have to rotate. He gets the reach and the power. Conversely, if he stays in a neutral bow and tries to shoot that rear hand, he can't reach. So in order to hit the target, he's got to rotate forward. The third part, or the corollary of this, is what do you do if you're using both hands at once? Because we talked about front hand by itself, rear hand by itself. What about both? There are some uh, intermediate and advanced techniques that use both hands at the same time, and sometimes you're in a neutral bow, and sometimes in your, you're in a forward. So the answer to that is you can use either stance. Brad might use a back knuckle with his top hand and a vertical punch with his back hand, and if the target's close enough, the neutral bow is the appropriate stance to use with this. If the target's just a little bit further, he can still get some authority on the movement with the forward bow. So you can really use that shift for either one. Now a third general rule that applies to the hands is called the new hand in front. I'm going to have Brad face you uh, straight into the camera in a horse stance, which is typically what we have our beginners train in. And the example here will be an outward block. Now the vertical outward block comes up and over to the shoulder and when we cross into the secondary blocks for our standard purposes we'll do another vertical outward with the opposite hand. He's going to do an inward then that left hand will come up and out in front. Now in front means closest to the opponent and when you're teaching and when you're learning you need to know which hand refers to what because you may have your new hand the one you're going to use on the inside, you might think that's front because it's in front of that, but we're talking about what's in front closest to the opponent. So he's going to cross and go in front. So the rule is when your new hand is coming up to be applied, it goes in front. This would be the wrong way. Brad would come across with this inward and he would bring his new hand on the inside. Now that does a couple of things that we don't particularly care for in our system. Uh, if he brings that new hand on the inside, one, if you're looking at it from the front, let's do a couple of those like that. 
you're going to see that he doesn't seem to cover as much of his body. He can't quite reach over to his outside perimeters as if he does it correctly. He can reach all the way to the outside and come across. Some of your basic blocks can be used as real simple self-defense techniques. If I grab on a, uh, Brad's wrist, for example, when he does the crossover, bringing the new hand in front can be used to shed me off. Now, if I were to grab this and he brings his new hand on the inside, he can't do that. The other detriment to this is there's some pretty speedy people out there, so when he crosses over and brings his new hand on the inside and the guy puts a check in, he's going to lock you up and there's not much you can do. So that same idea of shedding, if he comes across, if I press here and try to check him off and you do that in a lot of the techniques, that new hand is the one that prevents you from being checked. So you've got a lot of really good reasons for making sure that your new hand goes in front and you want to check to see that you're doing that when you're working through your forms and your basics.